something strange in your neighborhood. Who you gonna call? Hello, citizens of YouTube land. Hey. Specifically of the province of gaming, because today we've got Ghostbusters Remastered for you guys. Yeah, Ghostbusters is a video game remastered. It is a... So without further ado, oh. take it away, VP. Okay. It is a 2009 action-adventure video game based off of the Ghostbusters franchise already. And it was released on pretty much all platforms at the time. Like, it was, it was released on Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Portable, Xbox 360, Wii, and the Nintendo DS. But some versions are different from others. So the version we're going to be looking at today is the PlayStation 3, PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Microsoft Windows version of the game for the remastered version. Because that's the version we're focusing on today. Uh, the remastered was released on October 4th, 2019, with the original game releasing on June 16th, 2009. Uh, and so, yeah, basically the game follows uh, the plot of what was supposed to be Ghostbusters 3 at the time, which was written by both Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis. Or Ramis, am I saying that right? Okay, cool. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, but because Bill Murray is a jerk, he did not allow Ghostbusters 3 to get made. And so basically the developers behind Ghostbusters the video game took the script of what was supposed to be Ghostbusters 3 and just turned it into a video game. And you, they created an all-new character specifically created for the game known as either the Rookie or the Cadet. They're kind of interchangeable, so... Uh, you play as the you play as the cadet in the game, and basically it plays a whole lot like Dead Space. If you've ever played Dead Space, you've pretty much played Ghostbusters because of the way that it, the camera angle is with the third person over over the shoulder camera. It's in similar vein to like RE4 or Dead Space, you also have your health bar on the back of the character, just like in Dead Space. So, yeah, there's a lot of similarities to Dead Space in this one. And it makes a lot of sense, because Dead Space was released a year before this game was. So, um, with that being said, let's get to the plot, shall we? Uh, the plot of the game basically opens up, the beginning of the game opens up in 1991, as this game takes place two years after the events of the second game, or uh, of the second movie. I think it's a game that... Bruh. <laughs> uh, it, the plot of the movie, or the plot of this game, takes place two years after the events of the second movie, in which they are opening up a Gother exhibit, in which we see here that something happens to which there's a bunch of ghosts that get loose. And the opening tutorial boss fight basically is Slimer, in which you have to take down Slimer as a result of it <laughs> and it's yeah like that like you you learn how to shoot the proton um the proton stream and all that and you, you have your proton pack and you basically like throughout the game you get like different other variations of the proton stream like there's your status stream and status shock and then you get your uh, sl and then you get your slime gun and the slime blower and slime tether, which slime tether is used to complete various easy puzzles throughout the game because it's not very hard at all. I played I played it on casual for the review guys, but it takes about eight hours to complete. The game here uh, tells me, or on my Nintendo Switch, it told me I played like fifteen hours or so. It's really, if you're speed running it, it's about eight, but for casual, it can take about 12 to 15 hours. Um, there are seven missions with different objectives throughout each mission, basically, in which the ending to that one, which uh, we run into our very first proper boss fight, that being the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. And it's like, what a what a, what a good way to get into our first proper boss fight than it being Stay Puff. And, and with that being said, I'm going to have it take over to the uh, to voiceover, Jake. 
Uh, as you can see here, this is the beginning right, of sunshine. the Are you okay? boss fight. All strapped and in. as you can see here, this is really all you have to do. Here he comes! You just got a really big dead manifestation himself! A raging blast of densely like, packed marshmallow! Destroy the obstacles he oh, tries throwing into to get you to... Give him full screen! Well, yeah, right, rookie. Your health insurance doesn't begin for another 89 minutes. Yeah, days. really, there's nothing much else to say in this later. All he shows you is really good at the end from 200,000 square feet of solid really marshmallow? It's really all that it takes to defeat the safe box. It's just one box. It's just a part you've seen here. So, um, yeah, I, I have nothing much more else to say other than You've got him on the ropes, Lapster! Clamp the last one so we can go home! Kill my dessert! Scoreboard reads Ghostbusters 2, Gozer the Gozerian 0. Looking like a real big leaguer out there, champ. Ray, Peter, we're in position. The trap is set. We're prepared to capture State Puff. Where is he? He's that white puddle you're driving through? Timing's off by just a hair, Egon, but we're glad the trap is working again. He said to show you how to defeat this boss fight. All right, now that we're back from that, <laughs> now that we're back from that, uh, after they defeat uh, Stay Puff, they realize that uh, there's something going on with the library, and so they head over there. And that's not before they're introduced to. That's not before we're introduced to Peck, who may or may not be the villain of the game. Uh, spoiler alert, he's not. <laughs> Why you got to do that? Spoiler alert, he's not the he's not the villain. Listen, this is a review, guys, of both the plot and the gameplay. So spoiler alert, Peck is not the villain. I initially thought he was, but he's not. And to be fair, it's a game that's now five years old, so Yeah, plus the, the and it's over ten years old now if you count the original version. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, he's uh, moving on from that. Uh, we then find out, then they go to the public library in which you go into a mini boss against um, the librarian who is the very first ghost that the Ghostbusters ever tried catching but failed. And so after you defeat her mini boss, you're then sucked into the ghost world in which then you have to face off against the collector. And uh, he's not that tough. In fact, he's another boss fight. So we'll have voiceover Jason take over from here. Oh boy. So as my idiotic voice of uh, live action self told you, this is the beginning of the collective boss fight. And when you see it right here, screen. this is, this is Look, all you have to do. Space is protected by black uh, so his, his mask at the beginning here is covered in black Neutralize the black so slide on his mask. So that way you can rip the mask off. And then after that, it's basically just blast him in the thing out. That's all you really need to do in order to defeat the boss. It's not that long. <laughs> Even though my gameplay here will probably show sucking really, really bad with the mask. Rip his mask off. It looks vulnerable. <laughs> so, yeah. Good, good, good luck with this one. Uh, other Jason who just played the game. Use the capture sweep to rip off his mask. Egon, help me help him open! Uh, yeah, that did it! Oh no, I think we just exposed his angry side. Bring him down all the way, Tom, and bring on the eye if you can! He's got nothing that can resist with both on screen! There he goes! My ass and more! We need to get out of here. There's a new portal back here! Come on, Rook, that's gotta be the way out! Now that we're back from him, uh, thank you, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that we're back from voiceover, Jason, we then are we then see that there was a Mandela and that one of them was shut off. Now these Mandelas is basically what is going to be dooming. Is basically was trying to. So there's this guy named Ivan Shandor who's trying to bring the ghost world and the real world together. <laughs> and uh, the whole plot of the game is trying to stop that and by shutting down the Mandelas in which the next one is actually 
in the Sedgwick Hotel, which is the opening level of the game. So you go back to the Sedgwick, in which you have to face off against the Spider Witch. And, uh, and she's another boss fight, so we'll have a voiceover, Jason. Heads up! So this is the beginning part of the Spider Witch boss fight. And honestly, she's also not that bad. I had a little bit of trouble my first time go, uh, playing through this boss fight, but if you put the uh, Ghostbuster weapon that I did, which is the, um, uh, the basically like the machine gun looking thing there that I'm using, uh, she's really easy and a breeze to get through. And to the right. There's really nothing much else to say except you just gotta like learn her attack patterns and then you gotta like go find her. Uh, when that pops up here, in fact, I'll show you how to do this part as well. When she shows up. Yeah, she like it's disappears and you gotta go Don't find her and make sure up. she doesn't pa power up again. And then you just rinse and repeat this until the boss fight's over. And that's really how you defeat this boss. It's, it's not that hard at all. So. and take over from here. All right, now that we're back from the Spider Wedge, after you defeat her, the Ghostbusters then have to go into the middle of the Hudson and to go to Shandor Island, in which they're like, how did just how did an entire island just seek into the Hudson River? And they're like, I don't know. It just happens. And so Shandor Island rises above, in which you have to find a way to go into the gate. And after that, you face off against another boss fight, which is made of a purely black slime. So in order to even do any damage on this boss, you have to use the slime blower for this. In which, after you defeat that, they're like, hey, hooray, everything's fine, everything's dandy, well and good, you know? No, they're wrong. Turns out, it turns out, this guy is like, turns out the person that they're trying to stop is super powerful and is like, Nah, -uh. <laughs> and uh, basically goes on with his plan anyways. I'm like, what? We stopped the Mandela, and they're like, uh, I guess that doesn't happen. Oh, wait, I forgot another thing. Uh, before that, they have to go to the Natural History Museum. Completely skip this part. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> how dare I? Um, they have to go to the Natural History Museum in order to. Uh, stop another Mandela, in which they have to face off against another boss called the Chairman, who's like the second, who's like the right-hand man of Ivan Shandor. And so basically then we see, so then he's another boss fight, which means we'll have voiceover. Hello, Chairman. Ready to get what's coming to you? All right, as voiceover Jason completely forgot to include this boss fight, as this actually comes before the Spider Witch boss fight. Can't believe that idiot. Uh, I'm just here getting a few up. I'm get, I'm here getting an upgrade real quick before we start this. As generally, if you if you just upgrade this one thing, it becomes the most powerful, overpowered Kidnapping weapon in the entire game. Felony, and, and we and do not tolerate it in our jurisdiction. Like the uh, few minutes here. Uh, so I'm just aimlessly it's looking around until he finally shows up. So that way I can tell you how to do this. And there's like that big glow right there, and you have to like hit it a bunch. And then all of a sudden he brings up his black ones, so you just blow them with some black slime real quick. And that's really how you see the boss fight, so the European boss. Nice it's, it's pretty easy once done. you actually get used to the attack pattern, so yeah. Jason, take over from here. Alright, now that we're back from him, I don't like him. <laughs> now that we're back from him, we then go back to the cemetery as I just skipped over the Sedgwick part and the natural history part. So we go back to the cemetery in which he's like, uh, actually, I'm still going to go ahead with my plan. And so then the, the Ghostbusters have one final showdown against the architect. So I'm back once again, and the BP forgot to give a clear segue into the uh, narration for this boss fight, and once again, 
if he just equipped this one weapon here, guys, he is literally a piece of cake. Like, there's literally nothing that can <laughs> overpower this. And I got um, I got every upgrade in the uh, in the game, except for like one. <laughs> and that's because I didn't really need it. I just like, the final boss I just, uh, just like hit him a whole bunch. And then try re uh, gaining his strength. And there's a little visual glitch there. We've got it. to get through this shit. <laughs> it's growing stronger. And yeah, if you just do this, what I'm Keep doing here, you'll be able to defeat him pretty easily. Like just destroy those two things. There, just destroy those when he tries to regenerate his health, and you'll be able to go along the way. <laughs> Gods for breakfast. I'm deactivating the cross stream governor. I never thought I'd say this again. Cross the stream. We eat gods for breakfast? Too much, you think? No, I liked it. Ivan Shandor's destructor form and he's like I control the ghost world and then at the very end after you defeat him you then get one final line where Ivan Shandor is like I am a god and then we see from uh Egon he's like we eat gods for breakfast and they're like all right cut across the streams and they blow him into oblivion and blow themselves back into the real world in which Dan's like, we eat gods for breakfast? He's like, I know, it was stupid, right? He's like, no, I like that. <laughs> and basically the game ends there with Slimer running off and slimes Alyssa because it turns out that like Bill Murray's character and Alyssa kind of had like a thing going on in which he's still a jerk like he is in the movies. So, yeah, there's that's really the plot of it. You know, they Ghostbusters have to try to stop Hell on Earth, basically, from coming true. And that's basically the whole plot of the game, is stopping this evil bad guy. So, are there, like, any glitches or anything mm -hmm. like that that people should be aware of? Um, no. Uh, really, the only major thing I ran into was, like, some frame rate issues, because, like... I was playing the remaster on the Switch, which is not a very powerful console at all, guys. And so, like, there were some frame rate issues in which it kind of, like, had some slowdowns and stuff. But other than that, there's really no, there's no really game-breaking glitches where it makes you like, whoa, what the heck? What just happened? You know, you ever run into the... Uh, just leave a comment down below if you ever ran into a glitch in a game that made you question what you were playing before. Because I've had that happen. <laughs> Uh, the graphics are actually pretty good, but once again, I was playing on Switch, which means they were subpar compared to, like, PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. Uh, so, the graphics were decent and okay, and like I said, the frame rate, or the frame rate it, there were some frame rate issues, but other than that, it's a decent game. I'd give it a 9 out of 10 as a rating, because, again, it's really the frame rate and stuff. But maybe if I were to play it on a different console, then maybe the uh, rating would change from a 10 out of 10. But for now, it's like the gameplay is awesome. The story is great. I my stu You just go out and play the game because my stupid review cannot even describe how great the story is. And also, the graphics are pretty good for today's standards, you know, even if it is played on the Switch. Well... Uh, what I can add to this is, of course, as always, guys, if you have played Ghostbusters Remastered or Ghostbusters 2009, and you believe that those are the worst versions of Ghostbusters video games that you can play, well, Have you clearly, played the, the 80s Ghostbusters game? I know that's probably where you're going with it, but yeah. seriously, that's not Ghostbusters. Just go ahead and play this one. Which is like an actual, like, it, Dan Aykroyd has even said that this game is essentially Ghostbusters 3. So, but hey, just remember, guys, we're just 
Two idiots with a webcam. Our opinions do not matter, except they actually do, because we have a YouTube show, except they actually don't. So, guys, with that being said, stay tuned on the gaming channel, where next time we've got The Sopranos, Road to Respect. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it, it yeah. Yeah. That, that's all I can say is just, yeah. Yeah. So, and after that, um, we've got, uh, what, what, what games do we have after that coming? How about Star Trek? We got Star Trek. We got the Star Trek review. Uh, we're kind of doing that on our own. We've also got, uh, Dead Island's coming. Um, oh yeah, I still got to play through a lot of Dead Island. I'm still very well into the beginning of it. We've got Scarface, The World is Yours for the PS2 coming. We've got Grand Theft Auto stuff coming, so stay tuned for that. Oh yeah. Also, moving forward with the gaming channel, we're obviously switching the style of it because it's like the main channel is reviews, the comic book channel is reviews, so it's like we should just stick with reviews for the gaming channel because we've come to realize that. Because of both school and work, we don't really have time to just sit down and record video game, but and record video games and play video games and do let's plays and stuff. So you're just going to basically be getting a bunch of uh, video game reviews and other stuff. Uh, we're like maybe be covering video game to news video and, game trailers yeah. and stuff like that. So I think I know the very I think I know the perfect video game trailer we should react to for our very first one. Well. What it is? What is it? You'll just have to find out. Yeah. So, with that, guy. With that being said, guys, we'll see you guys next time. And until then, there's only one thing left to say, and that, of course, is peace and love from Denny and Son. Bye.